Today I'm going to show you how to sharpen and output images for web using Photoshop. You can use this technique for a range of applications such as Facebook, Instagram, or websites. Facebook and Instagram apply compression when you upload an image. Compression can cause artifacts and loss of detail. By sharpening and resizing for specific uses, it gives us a bigger file size and more detail. The larger the file size when uploaded, the better the image would look when compressed. So I have a few images open in Photoshop and they're already processed and finished. I'm going to zoom in to 100% and I did that by pressing Control 1. So this image is pretty sharp already because I was using a tripod and my lens was at its sweet spot. But to sharpen for web, I actually sharpen it at its original size first and then resize it. So the way I sharpen it is by going to filter, sharpen, and using the smart sharpen filter. So I found this smart sharpen filter works the best even compared to unsharp mask. So depending on how sharp your image was and the lens you're using and whatnot, you're going to want to change the amount from around 100 to 200. So for this image, it's already pretty sharp, so I'm going to try 150%. And a radius of 1 to 2 is what you'd usually want to use. So I'm going to use 1.5 for this image. So the amount changes the the how strong you want the sharpening to be and the radius adjust the pixel width of the sharpening so if I increase the radius you'd see a higher contrast width and it just looks terrible so I'm gonna keep that at 1.5 and I don't usually use the reduced noise so I'm gonna keep that at zero I'm gonna make sure this setting Remove setting is on lens blur. So I'm going to apply that filter. And now it's nice and sharp. And it's going to look over sharpened. But this is OK because we're going to resize it. And it's going to look good. So I'm going to go to image, image size. And as you can see, it's pretty high resolution, around 6,000 by 4,000, this image already is and I'm going to resize it to 1200 the width so I usually resize my width to 1200 if I'm uploading to Facebook or my website and I found that gives a good balance between quality and not having high resolution of an image so I'm going to change the width to 1200 and I'm going to make sure the resample setting is on bilinear so bilinear works the best for this type of work. Press OK. I'm going to zoom in 100%. So I'm pressing Control 1 to zoom in to the actual pixels. That's the shortcut. And already it looks pretty good and it's pretty sharp already. And one more step. I'm going to actually sharpen this again and it's going to make it crispy. So I'm gonna, again I'm going to use filter sharpen smart sharpen and this time I'm, I'm gonna use a amount of around 200 and change the radius to point two and I also forgot I actually made a copy of the background and I the shortcut for that is control J or you can just drag this layer to a new layer and that'll make create a duplicate layer and I applied the sharpening to the duplicate layer. So now it's really sharp and it actually looks too sharp in some areas. So I'm going to change the opacity of this to 50% just to give it a good balance. And over here you can see on the edges it's kind of a halo. So what I mean is these edges have a white outline around them and I really don't want that and that's caused by over sharpening. 
So to fix that, I'm going to create a layer mask on the layer, pressing this icon over here. And a layer mask will allow me to hide a specific parts of the image. So I'm going to change the brush opacity to 100, and I'm going to choose a small soft brush. So hardness at 0%, and then I'm going to brush using a black brush along the edges. So I'm just going to brush this along the edges and that will get rid of that halo effect. And just a little bit down here too. Last step is to save it. So to save it, I'm going to go to File, Export, and Save for Web. So the Save for Web module allows you to control all the settings and color settings, profiles. So I always change the quality to 100, so that's the maximum setting. Make sure this quality is at 100, and you can see the file size is going to be. So this is going to be 770. KB and if I change the quality to maybe 70 and that that would be a standard size for um, saving your image if you just want to view it but that compresses the image down to 234 so Facebook can compress your images up to 80 percent so that would mean if I had a low quality image it would lo probably look something like around 30 percent. No, maybe not 30 percent, but 50. And you can see it starts losing a lot of detail. And if I go to the two up, you can see. So this is the original and this is the compressed version. I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see that with YouTube's compression, but if I even lower the quality even more, you can see it's losing detail and it's that sharpening is just not holding up and it's starting to look blocky in the sky so keep that at 100 percent and make sure progressive optimized these three are unchecked and because these actually reduce the file size you want to maximize the file size that's the trick and also one more important thing you want to convert it to sRGB. So the standard when you're editing in Photoshop is probably Adobe RGB or Profoto RGB. You want to convert it to sRGB because that's the standard color profile that all the web applications use. So if I didn't convert it, the colors would be way off. So once I've done that, I can save it to wherever I want. So for horizontal or horizontal images, I resize the longest or the width to 1200 pixels. But for vertical images, I do it a little bit different. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to sh sharpen it at 100% at the original size using Smart Sharpen. And I've already made actions to resize it for me so that I don't have to go into the menus all the time. So I resized the vertical orientation pictures to 960. So 960 for the longest side on the vertical images. And this action is doing the same thing. It's gonna sharpen the original image and then sharpen it again creating a duplicate layer on the resize image and sharpening that. And it's pretty easy to create an action. All you have to do is press this record button and then do your uh, sharpening at the original, resize, do the sharpening again with the duplicate layer, and then press stop. And then that'll create an action for you. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but I think it's a little bit too sharp in the ferns this area looks too sharp, so I'm going to change the opacity of this layer to 
maybe around 75 and I think that does a pretty good job so a good balance and I usually layer mask out the outer stars because I want all the focus to go to the Milky Way so I'm going to use the black brush I'm also going to change that past to 50% size up the brush using the bracket keys and then just paint along the edges of the stars of the frame and that will kind of reduce the sharpness of those outer stars and same thing I'm gonna save for the web and there's a shortcut for that it's control shift alt and s and that's for windows and I still do the same thing so maximum size and for the vertical images at 960 for the height it's gonna be a little bit lower because it's actually a lower resolution than 1200 by 800 for the horizontal images some images just have more detail like these stars and the rocks and ferns some images don't have as much so I'm going to do one more sharpening and show you an example of how smart sharpening at the end doesn't always help. So this image has a huge amount of detail in the foliage. So I'm going to do my action, resize it to 1200. And it's like way too sharp. If I enable disable this layer uh, visibility it looks pretty good already if I show the smart sharpening layer it looks way too sharp be the judge yourself and see if it's over sharpened and you may not even need the smart sharpen layer alright finally if I want to sharpen for or resize for Instagram I'm gonna do the same thing, same process. So I'm gonna do the sharpening at the original size. So 150%, then 1.5. And what I like to do for Instagram images, since it's best for portrait images or square images, I'm actually gonna root crop it to 8 by 10 it's gonna cut off the edges just a little bit but these edges don't really add much to the composition so that's alright and that'll give a little bit more space when you upload it to Instagram and when people see your images so for Instagram the width always has to be 1080 so you wanna you, you don't want it to be any lower than that so you want to get the width 1080 and on the horizontal images and the vertical images so landscape and portrait you want the width to be 1080 and you also can do the um, duplicate layer then smart sharpen again same thing you're just gonna resize it to 1080 instead of 1200 or whatever you do so for this one too, I also have action for Instagram, so it's gonna do, it's gonna resize it to 1080. Before that, I wanna crop it to 8 by 10 because that's the uh, biggest size that uh, Instagram will accept for portrait images. So 8 by 10, or else it'll crop it automatically if you have it um, bigger than that. So you want it to be 8 by 10 I'm going to crop that and apply my action. And that looks over sharpened to the stars so I'm going to do this on 50% and that looks good. 
All right, so that's the end of it. So basically you want your file size, you want it to be as large as possible. And the best way to add more file size is to sharpen your image. So more detail means a bigger file size. But you don't want it to be too sharp or else the edges and things will look cr crunchy, I guess. All right, so thanks for watching. And if you found this useful, please like, share this, and comment if you have any questions.